that one? Yeah, yeah. we would. Okay, good. All right. Good morning to the members of media. Thank you for coming out at short notice of this media conference, which has been hosted by the Central Executive of the Office Workers Trade Union this morning. And I'm speaking in my capacity as General Secretary of the Union. Um, before we get into the um, essential points of our media conference, I just wish publicly to express condolences to the family of George Lewis, who passed away yesterday evening. He was 103 years old, former employee of the union, former stalwart member of the Alphys Workers Trade Union. And we want to say to uh, his family that we appreciated the contribution which he made to the Alphys Workers Trade Union in a number of capacities. We want to deal fundamentally this morning with just one issue, and that was the arrant nonsense spoken by the Minister of Labor, Errol K. McLeod, at the rally held by the People's Partnership on Saturday at Mid-Center Mall. And we need to deal with a number of um, issues that he put out on the, on the national agenda and which require a very clear response by the union. Now, the rally was supposed to give a report to the country, that's at least what it was they said they would do, about the work that had been done uh, by the government through the years. And we expected that the Minister of Labor would have been able to speak to some achievements of his ministry with respect to labor. As it, as it turns out, he could say nothing really about labor and what he has done. And we recall a statement that he made in Faisabad on June 19th, 2010, shortly after the government came into office, where he said he would not simply be a minister of labor, but a minister for labor. Quite clearly that is not the case, because the major elements of the workers' agenda, which he was supposed to lead and champion, and therefore bring about major reforms in the labor sector, to the benefit of working people, workers, and trade unions, that has not taken place. And therefore, he had nothing to say, really, on Saturday. And it was quite evident by, um, by his ramblings on Saturday afternoon. And therefore, he could say nothing about the fact that since January, there has not been in place a recognition uh, board, registration recognition certification board, which he has a responsibility to make sure is appointed. So five months have elapsed and there is no recognition board in place, and that has major implications for claims by trade unions to represent workers and therefore to be able to engage in collective bargaining on behalf of workers. There are many other elements of the reform agenda, which specifically he was given the responsibility by the labor movement at our joint Casabo on the, um, on the 17th of of or 18th of April 2010, when we identified in great detail a workers' agenda in which he was supposed to take into the government to have achieved reform of the, of the Industrial Relations Act in important ways, dealing with the issue of having domestic workers um, covered as workers on the Industrial Relations Act, covering security officers and ensuring that they too could be properly represented by a trade union. Um, to deal with the, the very deleterious effects that those workers experience at the workplace. The issue of the very um, long outstanding Workmen's Compensation Act that has to be repealed and reformed and so on. None of these matters have been addressed by the minister four years into office. And therefore, instead of dealing with that and suggesting how he was going to go forward in achieving that agenda, um, he instead sought to attack the Oilfields Workers Trade Union in particular. I want to refer to, to two or three um, statements which he made, uh, clear reference to the Oilfields Workers Trade Union. One was the issue of workers who um, were dismissed by Trinidad Cement Limited um, following the strike that the union had um, in 2012. It is to remember that that strike was a legal strike 
under the provisions of the Industrial Relations Act, and the union followed all of the legal and lawful provisions of the act. At the end of the 90 days, um, we saw the intervention of the minister and had them to have the matter referred to the industrial court. That took place. Commitments were given at the level of the court by the employer that all workers were to return to work, and then the employer refused um, to take back in workers. That was a subject of a court matter before the industrial court, and the industrial court ruled in the union's favor that the company engaged essentially in illegal industrial action by um, having workers uh, out of employment. And there are other, the, the, the company, subsequent to the decision of the industrial court, has appealed that decision to show the vindictive, vindictiveness and wickedness of the employer, appealed the decision of the industrial court. So what the minister is saying um, about the union being quote unquote reckless in terms of having workers on the breadline is not just irresponsible, it is virtually taking the position of the employer um, in this matter, having regard to the, to the fact that the, the employer appealed the decision of the industrial court. And the minister is well aware of all of those facts. Um, and as, having been involved in the trade union movement for as long as he was, knows exactly what the processes and procedures are, as well as the issues that were involved in that dispute, because he attempted to, to mediate in that dispute after the strike began, um, and he well knows that the company was seeking to simply attack the union um, and to, to try to get the union out of TCL. And his, his statement um, seems to reinforce the, the employer's position in this regard. That then takes me to the issue of National Petroleum, um, where he said that a number of workers were dismissed, and again he was trying to suggest that the union somehow is responsible for the dismissal of those workers, when he knows full well the facts of that matter. Um, and there'll be more that we'd have to say about that and what he personally said while me attempting to mediate that matter um, in terms of the, 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 the total um, wrongness of the employer's position in dismissing those matters. That matter is also before the industrial court and we are very certain that the union will be vindicated in this issue because the workers took action in defense of their jobs, in defense of their lives with respect to health and safety issues. Um, and for a minister of labor to suggest somehow that workers taking action in defense of their lives and their health and their jobs is 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 um, is wrong um, is is really a statement that the minister is speaking on more on behalf of the employer than on behalf of of labor and we say so without fear of contradiction and this is in a case of a state enterprise where the cabinet of which he's a member quite clearly has a position in this state enterprise as they have at Petrotrain and at other state enterprises to get at the oil fees workers trade union and to attack the ODBQ. Um, we will not be called or nor will we be intimidated by any minister, nor will we be intimidated by any cabinet. We will continue to defend our members and workers in general um, fearlessly and honestly and in the tradition of the Blue Shirt Army. So I want to say that in relation to the MP issue and the TCL issue. Then, um, he was alluding to an accident that took place in Trinma in 1999 and said that he, had, he will have more to say about this on another occasion. Well, let us, let us put the facts out in the open so that there is no speculative you know, engagement. We're not like the video clip when a minister said that is not him and everybody could see who it was in that video clip. So we're not about smokes and mirrors here. We are about putting out the facts of the matter. Um, in October of 1999, or thereabouts, um, there was an incident on Trinmar Platform 23 in the Northfield Soldado um, on Compressor Station 26, when a worker suffered, a temporary worker at the time, suffered a very minor injury. When um, the a compressor was a was being started up after repair work. The compressor was down, repairs were done and effected, and the compressor was being started up 
and it was found that this worker, unknown to others, went into a cooler and got injured as a result. And the foreman of that particular job was Ansel Roger, um, then the branch president of the OB2 Trinmas branch, and an employee of, of, of Trinmas. This was in 1999, that's 15 years ago. Um, the company attempted to, uh, to, to take action using this incident against Comrade Roger, he being the branch president, um, at a time when the union led by Errol K. McLeod was fighting a battle against corruption of the then UNC government with respect to the sale um, or some other agreement for Trinmal Soldado Field, West Soldado Field, to one FW Oil. And if you go back in your records, you see a lot that was taking place at that time with respect to FW Oil, and a certain board member had to, um, had to, to resign. In fact, he had to leave the country very quickly and so on uh, because of, of issues surrounding um, the, the whole bidding process and, and the corruption of a tender process for the uh, operation of that West Soldado field and when bids closed and when they were reopened and all of that kind of stuff. Go back in your records and you'll check all of those facts. Uh, Common Rogers, branch president um, of Trinma was leading the fight on the ground at the time. And um, the company therefore saw this incident which happened on this compressor when he was foreman as an attempt to get him out. He was actually suspended for two months. Um, and the union fought to make sure that he was not victimized in that matter. And the president during the time was Errol K. McLeod. Significantly, as the leader of the Trinmar workers, Roger was re-elected many occasions after 1999. So the workers had full confidence in him. They did not lose confidence in him. And in 2006, Errol K. McLeod, then president general, chose Ansel Roger to be the first vice president of the union with a view to having Roger succeeded because Roger actually succeeded him in 2008. So we don't know how Eric K. McLeod could today be now trying to raise issues when he obviously did not have a problem with um, Comrade Roger's leadership of the Trinma workers and therefore and later on of the union. Um, and going into the gutters, that was, was, was similar to government ministers getting up in parliament and elsewhere and waving around people's medical records or other records in an attempt to discredit people. We, we view that um, very disparagingly um, and, and we condemn it outright, without mm. doubt. And we don't really want to get into the gutter uh, because, because um, there were accidents way back in the 70s in Point of Pair and Eric K. McLeod himself was injured in an accident at Point of Pair. But we're not going to go there. We, that's, not, that's not what we are about. We are about the fundamental issues and so on. And we're going to stay on that level of the fundamental issues. And lastly, in this regard, therefore, I want to make the point that, um, that the minister seems to have become very uh, befuddled and confuffled about the union and politics um, because it was very clear when he spoke at the Joint Casabo, was it the 17th or 18th? 18th. 18th of April 2010. He was the last speaker at the Joint Casabo. He was not present during the time, uh, but he spoke. Um, at the request of the trade unions, at the joint Casabo, and laid out the case in front of 500 officers and shop stewards of virtually every trade union in the country and a number of NGOs, the case for the MSJ's participation in the partnership that was going to be formed on the 21st of April at Faisabad, and the role of workers and trade unions in politics. Um, and that case was, was made by him. Um, so it's passing strange now that he thinks that the trade union's role is somehow to be more limited to the arena of industrial relations. Um, that is not certainly the experience or the history of the Oilfields Workers Trade Union going back to the days of Butler. Butler had, before the trade union, Butler had the British Empire's and home rule, workers and home rule party. Butler was a member of the Trinidad Labour Party together with um, Captain Cipriani and Adrian Cola Rienzi and so on, and Butler formed his own party. And then John F. F. Rojas was part of the um, was part of the West Indian Independence Party. In fact, he was the vice chairman of the West Indian Independence Party when he was president general of the Union. He was then also involved in the Caribbean National Socialist Party, together with people like David Pitt 
and, and others and so on. I think I think the late um, late um, Mr. Solomon was also a member of Patrick Solomon was a, a member of that. Later on, um, George Weeks, Workers and Farmers Party in 1965-1966, United Labour Front, of which Mr. McLeod was a member, he was then president of the Pontypridd branch, was a member of the party, central committee, a member of the central executive, and was the member of parliament for all pooch, and so on, in 1976 and 1981. And then, of course, we had the movement for social transformation before that, Committee for Labour Solidarity, of which he was um, a steering committee member of the CLS, and then an executive member of the movement for social transformation, and then, of course, MSG. So, he knows very well the role of the trade unions, the progressive trade unions, in attempting to, to have progressive, radical politics in the country representing the interests of working people and the poor, and in the fight to transform the society and bring about social justice. And the tradition of the ODBQ is very much consistent with that, and he obviously has, um, where he is, is no longer part of that movement or part of that tradition, because standing up wearing a yellow shirt in mid center Mall and defending the corruption and nonsense of this government places him somewhere else. That's all I have to say. Yeah. So, first of all, I'm not speaking here as political leader of MSG. I made it very clear at the start that I'm speaking here as General Secretary of the Altice Workers Trade Union. Um, and so we're speaking here, I'm not talking about MSG at all. MSG will speak for itself on an, in another form, but we're speaking here as only two central executive, and we have here members of the central executive and other leaders, former um, senior officers at executive and branch level of, of the union. Uh, is Ansel Roger part of that? This, 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 um... He's obviously, Ansel Roger is the president of the Altice Workers Trade Union, but we felt that um, it would be better for uh, him not to, 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 to try to speak to an issue that took place in 1999. It would be better for the union to speak. Uh, but that is why we are doing this in this way this morning. And we are sure this will not be the only statement that the union will make or that other unions will make. Well, we would have to judge that on a case by case basis. Um, and what I refer to are two matters that are no longer before him, the TCL and the NP. But of, given the fact that both of those matters are still alive, one in the um, industrial court, which is NP, and the other in the, um, in the high court, the, the court of appeal with respect to TCL, it is more than unfortunate that he would say something on those matters. Um, and what we would expect that the judges of the industrial court on the one hand and of the of the Supreme Court and so on would not be um, swayed or influenced by, by the statements by the minister, but would judge those matters on the basis of the facts that are before them, and the union will ensure that the facts are properly put before them. Insofar as other matters that may go before the minister, we will defend our members, and if there are issues that we have in how he is conciliating those matters, we will speak to that at that time. 